Hi guys, so I am coming at he coming at you live to um, talk about business and recruiting. So if you're watching a replay of this, um, I am gonna save it, so it may not be live. But I'm gonna wait just a second to see if some people pop on, and then I'll get started. Just waiting to see if some notifications. Hey, so make sure you tell me if you get on. Give me like a thumbs up or a hi or something like that so I know I can get started. Um, I do have some notes. So if you see me like looking over at my computer, um, that's what I'm doing. All right, so I don't want to waste anybody's time. So I am going to go ahead and get started. And I just want to go ahead and apologize um, right now because I'm about to take you to church and this may hurt some people's feelings and it may rub people a little bit the wrong way, but it's coming from love and it's coming from wanting to be successful. And this is my second cup of coffee. So I am up and ready to go. So anyway, Let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about, and I know um, Chloe kind of talked about this the other day, but network marketing or direct sales is a business, hands down. It's not a hobby. It's not a game. It's not a pyramid scheme. It's not something you can just half-ass do. And I apologize if you get offended by cussing because I get real serious. Um, people who treat it lightly are not going to succeed. If you're treating this like a hobby, you're not gonna succeed. And I'm not saying that to be ugly. I'm saying that because it's the truth. You're not gonna rise to the top and do the things that you wanna do if you're not taking it seriously. So people who treat network marketing like a career and a profession and a business, you have an amazing opportunity to have it pay off very well. Um, but if you are not treating it like a business, you are not going to be successful. That means that you cannot work just when you feel like it. You have to work all the time. Period. All the time. I This past year, I was pregnant, and now I have a new baby. I've got two kids. I'm still learning how to keep them alive. Um, but I cannot let my business suffer. So if you are not treating this like a business... Don't expect to succeed. Love you, mean it. Okay? Um, and another thing is you don't know what you can achieve if you don't try. If you just get scared and shut down and you're not trying, you don't know what you can succeed or what you can do to succeed. Um, and another thing is like you're going to have to work hard no matter what you do or no matter where you work. It's not always just going to be a cake in the park. I don't even know, a walk in the park or whatever. Um, so you might as well work somewhere where you actually get paid for the hard work that you do. Meaning, I'm a teacher. I can work my tail off all year round and have the best scores possible. I'm still not going to make more money. I mean... There's just not opportunity there to make more money. My salary is my salary. But when you're working your tail off for this business and you are committing to work, you're going to get paid for how hard you work. And you have to ask yourself, where else do you have that opportunity? Where else do you have that opportunity to really, really work and get paid for how hard you work? Because that's here. That's with Sensi. That's with this amazing company, okay? So tell yourself that, okay? Um, and just remember that you didn't work this hard for that long to give up now. If you're having a hard time or you've been in a rough spot, which I know I have been, and I've been honest with Chloe, I've been honest with my team, I was in a rut, I was down, I was sad, I was still trying to figure out how to work this business with two kids, but I'm not going to give up and I'm going to dry my eyes. I'm going to pull my big girl panties up and get back to work. And that's just what it has to be. And a lot of times when I'm coming on here, giving y'all preaching to y'all, it's because I need to hear it myself. 
And because when I say it and when I'm preaching it to people, I know that I can do the same thing. And Colleen, I'll sh um, save this video and I'll post it for you. Um, so just remember that. And another thing is you need to acknowledge the obstacles that you have. So if your obstacle is that you don't have a ton of time, that's fine. Acknowledge the obstacle, but don't give it power. Don't let it be an excuse. Because if you're making an excuse for why you're not working, you're never going to work. Your team's not going to work and you're not going to get to where you want to be, period. And if you get discouraged because you failed, failure brings education, period. Every failure, something good is going to come out of it if you do the right thing. If you fail and just give up, nothing good's going to happen. However, if you fail and teach yourself how to do better, you're going to rise to the top. And that's just how it is. So you have to engage and know that you have to be willing to do the things that you don't want to do so you can get to where you want to be. And that's exactly the season that I've been in this past couple of months is it's things that I didn't want to do because I'm an awful pregnant person and I'm not afraid to admit that. I love the outcome, but I am not a fun pregnant person. I know that about myself. My husband knows that about me. It's just not my favorite time. And if you're not going to do things that you don't want to do, you're not going to get where you want to be. And you have to remind yourself every single morning. If you need to write it down on a post-it note in your mirror when you're doing your makeup, you need to remind yourself of that because you cannot give your failures power. You cannot give your obstacles power and you have to do the things that you don't want to do to get where you want to be. And another thing, I took these notes from just like different events that I've been in. Ask yourself this, ready? People can feel your energy. Ask yourself, do you light up the room? Do you light up the room and can people feel your energy? Do they think you're going to be a mean girl because you have a resting bitch face? Maybe because I do have really bad resting bitch face. But once they talk to me, they realize that I am very nice and I'm very awkward. And that's why people, and that's why I don't talk a lot. But ask yourself, can they feel that you want it? Can they feel that you are ready to rise to the top because one of my recruits is actually on here. Her name's Bailey and she's amazing, amazing. Like I am so thankful for her. And she actually came to me because she said she wanted to be with someone or on a team with someone who took it seriously. And she could tell that without even knowing me. We've never met in person until world tour. Ask yourself, can people see that from you from social media? from going out to restaurants, from doing anything, does your energy light up the room? Because the view that you adopt your, for yourself profoundly impacts the way you live. And I think Heidi was the one that said that. I took that from reunion last year or somewhere, I don't remember. The view that you adopt for yourself profoundly impacts the way you live your life. So if you're telling yourself that you suck, that you can't work, that you can't do that, people are going to get that vibe from you. So you fake it till you make it. You pull up your big girl panties. You have some self-confidence and you live your life the way that you need to. Okay. All right. A few more things before I get talking about recruiting. Um, people move products. Systems move people, leaders are born at events, period. People move products, we move products. Systems move people, follow-up systems move people. Leaders um, training their people with a system move people. Leaders are born at events. I can't say that enough. I know I was born at SFR, period. Leaders are born at events. Even if it's an event that your team does, leaders are born at events. Um, most people, this business does not just come easily. It takes hard work and it takes dedication. So you have to keep planting seeds. 
you have to keep planting seeds. You can not only sow two seeds a, a month and expect a big harvest, meaning you can not only ask two people to join your team and expect a million people to come back to you. It's the 80-20 rule. If you are not planting every, if you're not planting seeds every single day, you cannot expect your business to grow. If you are not planting seeds every single day, every day, y'all, you cannot expect your business to explode. My challenge for you is to get 100 no's. The reason why I want you to get 100 no's is because the yeses live in the land of the no's, y'all. The yeses live in the land of the no's. I was a no for months, for years. People on here, I guarantee every single one of you didn't say yes the first time you were asked. Okay. Last thing before I start talking about recruiting, if you want to recruit, you need to be a leader. Whether you have no one on your team right now or whether you have 300 people on your team right now, you have to be a leader. And I want you to ask yourself and make a list. I want you to actually write this down, y'all. Make a list of what a good leader would do. Y'all tell me, what are some things a good leader would do? I want you to tell me and interact with me right now. What is something a good leader would do? And then ask yourself if you are exhibiting those things. If you look up to Chloe, tell me what she does as a leader to show you. If you look up to your sponsor, ask yourself if you are doing those things. And if you're not, this is the opportunity to change them because you have to make change if you're not where you want to be, okay? You have to make change if um, you're not where you want to be. Um, one second. Okay, sorry, I had somebody um, just messaging me wanting to reinstate. So, anyway, had to take a second. Anyway, yes, communication with your team, leading by example. If you're not showing them what you're doing, if you're working your tail off, but you're not showing your team that you're working your tail off, they probably think you're not working. And, I mean, I'm saying that for myself because I know for the last four or five months, I have not been sharing with my team how I'm working because I didn't feel like working, so... I was only half ass working and I wasn't sharing with my team. So my team wasn't thinking that I was working. And I mean, it was just a big old circle. And I can say that because it's about me. And I know that I wasn't doing what I needed to do. So I pulled up my big girl panties and here I am. So top 10 recruiting tips, y'all. Y'all ready? Plant seeds now. I know I've already talked about that. You cannot only work during an incentive period. You cannot only work when there is a join special. You cannot only ask people to join when you need a bigger paycheck. It's not going to work that way. You need to plant seeds now and they will grow into the future. Because I need you to ask yourself, very few of us join the first time we're asked. You need to plant seeds now. That is why I have a dream team. Look at how long this list is, y'all. There's not five people on it. There's a lot. You can see I've written one, two, three, four. I have five people crossed off because they joined. Not the first time I asked them. And you have to write it down because you're not going to remember. When someone reaches out to you and they don't join right away, Facebook Messenger is not the way to keep up with them. Write their name down. Write their name down. Plant seeds now. Build relationships. Okay? Never make it about you. It's always about how it can bless them. Do not say, join my team. Don't say it, because then it's about you. Say, join our team. Make it about them. It should bless them. Maybe they don't want to be a superstar director and quit their job. Maybe they only want 100 bucks a month to go get a manicure and pedicure and their husband not bitch at them. You don't know. Make it about them. Figure out what it is that they want. Maybe they just want friends. 
Maybe they just want connection. You don't know. Number three, always start with the opportunity, meaning always ask people to join your team, then host, then buy. You can't offer a business opportunity to someone if they've already said no to hosting or buying. Think about that. If you ask someone if they want to buy a warmer and they say no, how are you going to say, well, do you want to join my team? No. The answer is no. You have to start with the opportunity. And once you flip that into your mindset, it'll be, it'll change for you. Number four, make it a lifestyle. When I say make it a lifestyle, that means you need to see the opportunity in everyone. Do not let your mind and opinions cross off people without even asking or without even trying. And I know that I've done that before. Oh, she's an attorney. She doesn't want to join our team. She makes enough money. Hello, Cassidy Johnson, attorney, still joined Cincy, still earned a free trip to Europe, still rocking it out. Don't put that in your mind. Oh, she's a single mom and has got three kids. She doesn't have time. I don't have time. Who has time? You make time. Do not cross people off of your um, list without or like in your head. You don't know what people want. People may just want a friend. So you make it a lifestyle. And when I say make it a lifestyle, that doesn't mean just start poaching people down Um Asking every single, you want to join my team? You want to join my team? You want to join our team? Whatever. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. A lot of times, the very first time that I mention to someone that I think that they would be really awesome in joining my team is in a joking manner. Because if you come at people really seriously, sometimes that makes them back off because it's scary. I know a lot of you guys were probably scared to join our team and to join Sensi because it's a scary thing to do. But if you're making it a lifestyle and you're constantly recruiting and you're constantly finding new people and you're not crossing them off your list because they're a principal and you don't think a principal would want to work sensi, make it a lifestyle. Number five, fortune is in the follow-up. If someone says no, that doesn't mean no forever. Write their name down in your calendar and follow up a few months later. Now, I don't mean Ask them to join and then don't speak to them again for three more months. You need to be building a relationship with them, commenting on their pictures, not just liking, not just liking their pictures. If they have a cute kid, say they have a cute kid. You have to be genuine and I'm not saying like to be fake, but a lot of times we just will like a picture and keep moving. We may think something to ourselves and not actually say it, but people are going to join you because they trust you, not because they just see you post on Facebook. They have to have a relationship with you. Um, see, and that's what Bailey said. She joined because for making friends is hard. It wasn't for the money. Exactly. And I can say that as well. Like my best friends in the world are in the Scentsy group. And I literally want to cry because I don't know what I would do without them. I don't know what I would do without the people in this group. Hands down. Okay, sorry for getting all emotional. Number six, every single host should be offered the opportunity to keep her party and join. Everyone. I don't care if you don't have your 500 PRV, but as a leader, you should. Before the 15th, let's just be real. Every single host should be offered the opportunity to keep her party and join. Now that we have the earn a kit, why would you not? I mean, that's just, that's dumb. If you're not offering every single person to keep their party every single time, you're doing yourself a disservice because yes, you will use, you will lose the initial PRV, but having a new team member and training them to be successful will pay you back over and over and over and over and over. Because I promise you that 25% that you're going to make off her one party, you are going to make triple of that if you train her to do well. And she can take care of those customers better than you can. She's got a relationship with them. Every single host should be offered the opportunity. And when I say that, you don't have to make it like something super serious. When you're going to close your party out, you could be like, hey girl, you've got $50 in free. So you could um, actually get your kit for like six bucks and you would get to keep all your free and half off. You'd get an extra half off by the perpetual party reward, give her that. And let her know how much she would make off that party. 
just that party alone. Let her know that, yes, she's going to spend her money or whatever, but she's going to make money back off of that, that you're going to transfer that PRV. Because if you're not transferring that PRV to your customer when they join, I need to know why. Because you need to. Every single one of you. Because one of our values is always to give more than you take. Don't keep her party. Transfer that PRV. Um, number seven. This one is one that I believe in more than anything. Brand yourself, people. Brand yourself. Everyone who is around you needs to know you, needs to see you, and they need to know that you are a Sensi consultant. Period. If you're not investing 10% back into your business to brand yourself, and it doesn't have to be the whole 10%, but you need to brand yourself. Like all my t-shirts and all my workout tanks are all Scentsy because anywhere I go, people know. You always need to have samples, catalogs, business cards, and join info on you. If you don't, I need to know what you're doing. Have a mobile office. Keep things in your purse. You need to be the Scentsy lady, not the direct sales lady that's dabbling in six different direct sales. That's a whole nother topic. I'm not going to go on that tangent. But if you're doing another direct sales, you need to give it up. And I'm just being honest. Give it up. Find your passion. If Scentsy's not your passion, so be it. But you cannot give 100% to two different direct sales. Your customers aren't going to trust you. You're going to half-ass both of them. You cannot be successful in two direct sales. Take it from me. I did it. I've been there. I've learned. And look at where I am now. Just saying. Brand yourself. That means water bottles, book bags, car, decal, car decals, t-shirts, front door signs. And I'm all saying things that I've done myself. Do you have to break the bank? No. But you need to brand yourself. People need to know you're the Scentsy lady. Number eight, posting on Facebook is not the way to grow a business. I'm going to say it louder for the people in the back. Posting on Facebook is not the way to grow a business. It gets you contacts. It keeps you relevant. It lets people watch you. Even those who you have no idea are watching are watching. Bailey was watching me and I had no idea. Remember that you always have to stay positive on social media. That means not posting politics. That means not ranting about your husband. That means not bitching about the pizza delivery man being late. Be positive. No one wants to be with someone who's negative. But social media and Facebook are for relationships. Relationships are built through social media. You need to comment and engage on social media. But it is not the way you're going to make Superstar Director. Getting out there and actually meeting people face-to-face -face and building those relationships on Facebook are going to get you more contacts. But that's not the way I've gotten to where I'm at. It's a tool. We need it but it is not the way to run your business. You need systems. You need all the other things. Um, and another thing I want to talk about, do not cold reach out to people. That's not how Sensi Consultants do it. And I say that, I mean like, if you've never talked to somebody, don't message them and ask them to join your team. Don't do it. Message them and ask them how their family is. Build a relationship with them. You are not going to get a million people to join your team by cold reaching out. It ain't going to happen, girl. It just ain't. I'm telling you. Number nine. Ask. Ask. If you do not ask, the answer is always no. If you don't ask, the answer is always no, people. Always no, because you didn't ask. And if you don't ask, I'm going to ask them to join my team. Not being ugly, but if you aren't asking people, I'm going to ask people and they're going to join my team and you can't be mad about it. You never asked them. It doesn't matter if they're your customer or not. I'm not going to go and steal your customer. I'm not going to go and steal your people. But if you've never asked them to join your team, I can guarantee you somebody else will. It may not be with Sensi. It may be with another direct sales or it may be with somebody that they think is really committed to that. I'm using Bailey as an example again. She, her consultant, she didn't think was serious. And she came to me and asked me and she said her consultant had never asked her to join her team. Never asked her. 
If you don't ask, the answer is always no. Asking 50 people a month to join you on the opportunity. If they don't want to join, you can ask them for referrals. But if you don't ask, the answer is always no. You can say, hey, do you know anybody that might be looking for extra income? And you build a relationship with them. You don't just go to them and cold ask them. And number 10, I know I said brand yourself was really important, but um, share your story. Share your story. And your story may change. Your why may change, but you need to share it with passion. People know how much I love Scentsy. People know how much it changed my life. And because of that, they trust me. Because if somebody doesn't trust you, they're not going to want to join your team. And when I say share your story, yes, you can share it on Facebook, but you need to be sharing it in person with people. And like I said, I am not somebody who's super serious about asking someone to join my team because that freaks me out. It makes me nervous. But I'll go places. And if you think that people don't joke on me for being so sensey crazy, you're wrong because they do. All of my friends that aren't sensey and all of my husband's friends totally make fun of me. And you know what I say? And I'm sorry if that offends anybody, but I just tell them that's fine because I just spent a week in Europe for free while you were here still working. I surpassed my teaching salary. Selling wax, y'all. Selling wax. So they can make fun of me all they want, but I share my story. I tell them I had $68 in my bank account when I joined on the $49 special. And you know how much it was after tax and shipping? 66 I had $2 left in my bank account, y'all. And look at where we are now. Not because I don't believe. Not because I let people tell me it's a pyramid scheme and make fun of me. I don't care. Because I'm laughing my way all the way to Europe, all the way to Punta Cana, all the way to Disney World for free. Because I'm asking people, because I'm sharing my journey, because I'm not giving up, because I'm using my failures as opportunity to learn. Because I am getting no's all the time. I'm getting laughed at all the time. And I don't care. You cannot let them bring you down. This is a business. Make it a business. Work it a business. Work it as a business. And you will succeed. Remember, don't let people bring you down. Make a list of what a good, reader, a good leader will do. And ask yourself if you're being those things. If you're not, change it today. Write it down. Change it today. Even if you have a team of two people, you need to show them that you're working. You need to show them that. Okay? Does anybody have any questions before I get off here? Hopefully that didn't offend too many people. But remember, you're going to have to work hard and you're going to have to work even when you don't want to. But I promise if you stay consistent, the work you're doing now is going to pay off six months from now. Don't give up if you're in a hard season. We're all going through things. You never know what's going on behind the scenes. Be kind, be a leader, and rise to the top. Love y'all. Mean it.